Hi folks, so my name is Rob. I'm a senior learning technologist at Dublin City University in Ireland and I just want to tell you a very short, nice story about how we used Moodle earlier this year to maximise our student engagement with their student feedback surveys. Um, out of interest, are many of you from the university or higher education sector here or are you from different sectors? We have some people here, so uh, you're, you will probably be familiar with the idea of evaluating teaching, having professors and lecturers uh, uh, collect feedback from their students at the end of a semester or at the end of a year. Um, around uh, their their experience in the classroom. It's very, very widespread um, and it's, it's used for a variety of, of reasons. Often it's perhaps mandated for quality assurance or regulatory reasons, um, probably serves a variety of purposes to inform institutional review, to inform program review, curriculum design, or indeed for a lecturer or a professor's own professional development. They may collect student feedback in order to inform a, a promotion or a, a fellowship uh, application. There's lots of different instruments that exist. By and large, I think, you know, uh, issuing a survey, an anonymous survey, is probably the dominant tool. Although, interestingly, at DCU, whilst we do issue surveys to students, we also uh, organise um, qualitative staff student forums where they can discuss uh, uh, matters and feedback in, in, in a dialogic fashion. Uh, there's a healthy literature base out there around the problems with these types of uh, survey instruments to get student feedback, not least of all the biases that often exist. It's shown quite a lot that uh, uh, female educators, for example, receive harsher criticism than their white male uh, uh, lecturer counterparts, which is a shock, I know, uh, but uh, I won't get into that. In, 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 in this presentation. Um, at DCU, we uh, have a student survey of teaching in SSOT, which is a system we've had in place for, for a number of years. And what happens is each of our five faculties in the university decide that X number of modules will participate in the SSOT process at the end of each semester. And we run the SSOT using the good old trusty Moodle questionnaire plugin, uh, set to anonymous, obviously, so student feedback is anonymous. And we set it in public mode as well, so that uh, the individual questionnaires on, on individual courses can all feed into a, a master questionnaire. And we have a very useful plugin called Questionnaire Manager that actually deploys those questionnaires out to the dozens and dozens of uh, courses that are participating in the in the SSOT. So the Questionnaire Manager takes the master questionnaire, uh, places it in kind of the top section of each of those Moodle courses, and is used to configure kind of the opening, closing dates, the hiding, the unhiding, etc. So on the left-hand side, you can see the Questionnaire Manager block as it would appear on the master Moodle course. You've got the options there. I, I just simply upload a CSV file of all all of the Moodle courses that I want to receive the questionnaire and I have some options there to hide and show and so on, look at statistics and so on. And then on an actual Moodle course itself, you can see that's just a screenshot of section zero of one particular module and you can see the questionnaire just pops pops in there so nice and easy for students to find. That's been the setup for quite a number of years. Uh, as, as I say, you know, the tool is very simple. I upload a CSV file, the questionnaires appear on the courses. You can't make it any more simpler than that. Uh, however, from time to time, sometimes our staff complain about it and they often and deride or, or moan about the Moodle-based SSOT process. Um, even though the tool itself technically works well, I think kind of some of the process and the buy-in from staff and students around it probably isn't as simple and straightforward and reliable as the actual technical solution is itself. One big issue is sometimes the questionnaires are deployed after the teaching term finishes, which I mean, no student is going to take their time to fill in a questionnaire when they're off on their Christmas holidays or their summer holidays. Um, sometimes as well, students are maybe over-surveyed, um, they're completing in different different surveys for, for, for multiple modules at, one, at, at, at once, and they don't really have a kind of any sort of incentive or it's not really kind of promoted or, or marketed uh, to them to complete it. So an opportunity arose this year uh, from my point of view to try and maybe kind of consolidate and define some good practice around capturing student feedback on Moodle as one of our faculties was undergoing a formal quality review and as part of that they needed to capture students' experience on their teaching at program level within the faculty. And I had a conversation with them. Uh, and they were asking about different tools that they could use. Will they use Qualtrics? Will they use Google Forms? At one point, there was a conversation about distributing paper-based surveys, and could I find a scanner that would scan in all the surveys? And I said, folks, no way. We have all the ingredients we need to make this work on Moodle, and here's how we're going to do it. So there were kind of a couple of elements to this uh, initiative. One, obviously, was the, at the, the, the foundation of it was that questionnaire manager plugin I mentioned that deploys the questionnaires on multiple Moodle courses. We're also very lucky in the university a few years ago, we moved towards creating program level courses for all of our programs in the university. Now, these are Moodle courses, like any other Moodle course, but um 
it's used by program chairs or program coordinators to deliver program level information to students and help them build a kind of a, an affinity and an identity with their program, not just with their six or 12 courses or modules that they're taking because uh, of course the faculty wanted to collect student feedback at the program level so uh, the program pages were a useful vehicle for that. We also knew we needed to kind of promote this well to students and push them and encourage them to complete it and let them know that there'd be an incentive uh, for them to do it and we used another really useful plugin called audience message which allows you to put a customizable message on all users' dashboards so that when they log in, they kind of see a, a very uh, media-rich or text-rich uh, message for them. And then lastly, then we use some configurable reports to monitor the process as it was underway so that the faculty knew what programs they might need to target, if they needed to push the survey a little bit more, and what programs were, had a good response rate, and so on. Um, so, really importantly, this was very much led by the faculty, the Associate Dean of Teaching and Learning and the faculty manager. They were really invested in collecting the student feedback as part of their quality review. So I, I worked very closely with them on the rollout. We rolled out the questionnaires in the middle of the semester, so not after the semester when all the students were off on their holidays. Rolled it out in the middle of the semester. They identified um, optimum dates and times to allow students some time to complete it in class, on their phones, on their laptops, etc. And our program chairs and our program, or our program coordinators in the faculty really encouraged and pushed and, and spoke about this to their students and encouraged them to complete it to let them know that their, feedback, that their feedback was important and valid. As I mentioned, we had targeted messaging. There was raffle prizes for the students as well to encourage them, a bit of extrinsic motivation there. Um, and then, of course, the progress reports were very useful to see who, uh, which programs had good response rate and less than good response rate. And then, in some cases, then the, kind of the dates for completion of the survey were extended as a result. Um, so this is what the audience plugin block um, looks like, as you can see there. Um it uses, it looks for certain uh, fields in the user's profile in order to give them a targeted message. So at DCU, for example, each of our students would have their faculty, their school, and their, their course or their program listed in their program field. So then I was able to configure a number of these rules to target uh, uh, messages for each of the students on each of the specific programs that we wanted to collect feedback from. And you can see then just a very short piece of text uh, uh, encouraging them to, to to uh, participate in the survey. And uh, really importantly, uh, our associate dean recorded a little 30 second clip uh, where she's kind of really encouraging and putting a face out there and saying, I want your feedback, this is really important. Uh, and that was obviously part of the, the audience message as well. My colleague Matassam in, in the Teaching Enhancement Unit then uh, is a whiz on all things reporting with Moodle and he developed a really handy um, monitoring report using the configurable reports block um, to kind of allow the associate dean and the faculty manager to see what the level of, resp of completion was uh, as the, the, the process was underway. So if you, you might, might not be able to see, make out the full details, but you can download the slides later. But for example, you know, I'm, I'm looking here now at the, 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 the highest level of completion completion rate for the survey. So we have the MA in chaplaincy studies, 82% response rate, the master in education, 66% response rate, uh, the bachelor of religion, 56% response rate, and little progress bar there as well to give a visual indicator. So this was really useful for the associate dean and the faculty manager to kind of figure out where, where the problem areas were, where students weren't completing the, the feedback and they were able to do a, a greater push and a greater um, uh, encouragement for the students to complete the, the, the survey. Um, in the end, the faculty associate dean and the faculty manager were very um, positive about the feedback that they received. Uh, you can see a, a short little excerpt there from the associate dean. Um, she said that the volume of data was really, really valuable and it was, you know, will be used very strategically within the faculty, both for the immediate quality review that they were undergoing, but more importantly for, for making uh, improvement plans for the future. And um, uh, she also said, obviously, students found the process very, very straightforward because, of course, students were just using Moodle. To, platform that they're used to day in, day out, that they know and they dream of in their sleep, or certainly I dream of Moodle in my sleep anyway, and I'm sure all the rest of you do as well. Um, and you can see there the Dean said, you know, she received no queries about the process or no issues arose or no confusion or anything, uh, which I think, you know, is a, is a testament to how kind of smooth and how successful this initiative was. 
So just thinking about kind of maybe some of the, the, the kind of strengths of this approach, um, you know, the anonymity was important, obviously, and the questionnaire was set up as anonymous uh, across all of the program pages that it was deployed on, but, you know, we were still able to monitor the progress. We weren't interested in, obviously, what specific students were saying. We don't want that level of, of detail, but we do want to see um, are each of the program cohorts actually engaging and responding? So those uh, configurable reports were really useful for, for doing that. Again, we were utilizing all the existing tools. We didn't need to go buy a new tool, didn't need to pay for anything extra, didn't need to worry about our data being hosted by some other tool or platform. This was all done safely and securely within our VLE that we all know really, really well and that we're already very, very familiar with. Um, you can see as well, the response rates were, were very, very high. The undergraduates, almost half of them responded. The postgraduates, almost 30% of them responded. Usually, I think before that, uh, the, 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 the regular module level SSOTs might get a zero or 1% response rate. So uh, that's a, a, a quite a significant increase, which is, which is good. And a really useful range of feedback was then collected, because obviously, if we're going out and we're really pushing and targeting and encouraging and maximizing the amount of responses we're going to get. We're going to get really useful feedback for the faculty to, re to reflect on and to uh, incorporate into their future strategic planning. So very much this initiative showcased an effective combination of our existing tools at no extra cost to facilitate, promote and monitor the uh, student engagement with their, with, their, with their student feedback. And it was fantastic that we had all those tools available. It was fantastic that it all worked so well and so smoothly. Uh, but really the most important bit about this whole endeavour was actually the people involved in it and it was the leadership that was shown by the Associate Dean and the Faculty Manager to really push this and really engage with the students, the students themselves obviously, who bought in and really gave their really, really good quality feedback. So even though we had a number of different Moodle uh, technical uh, things in play, the human dimension was the most important part of this and I think that's really what led us to uh, uh, such a positive outcome. So. Thank you very much. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Rob. Uh, do you, anyone got questions for Rob? Many questions. Good. Mine's a quick question. You mentioned audience messaging block. Mm -hmm. Is that available in the Moodle plugins database? I don't think so. It's a Brickfield plugin. So if, oh, you, right, if okay. you pop down to Gavin and Karen, right, they, can, okay. they can explain a bit more about it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Rob. I was just wondering, do you do any feedback at module level then? Or do you just do it at program level now? And if you do it at module level, how do you go about that? So we do, and we, we've always done it at module level, just using the questionnaire manager block um, and, and deploying out the SSOTs at the end of each semester. So each faculty would kind of nominate X number of modules to receive the module level feedback. But there has been kind of less than great engagement from the module leaders and from the students at module level. And the timing of when the module level report uh, surveys are issued has always been problematic. So the engagement at the module level has not been good over the years, but uh, I suppose we we learned from that then and, and, and took from that and planned uh, a really kind of robust and well thought out program level uh, survey, which, which as we can see was, was successful. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we struggled at module level too. Yeah. Hi, thank you for that. Really interesting. We run programs with 20 modules in there. Every module has a questionnaire at the end. The, the you know, the first four or five modules, great, and then you just see a, you know, because yeah. it's the same questions every time. But actually, what we get back is invaluable. Mm. I'm just interested in two things. One, how do you, how do you shape a program survey that encompasses all of the modules? Because actually the feedback that they give us when we do get it on a per module basis is invaluable. Mm. And are you able to collate um, kind of site-wide feedback information? So you know that you know, on these 15 programs, 80% have been rated excellent or good or poor or whatever it might be. 
Yeah, so uh, in this particular instance, uh, the survey was crafted by the associate dean and the, and the faculty manager just for that one faculty because they were looking for particular, uh, they were looking for feedback on particular aspects to inform the quality review. So they defined some questions around teaching and learning, around facilities, around um, belonging and identity and affinity and, and so on. And they did keep it broad because as you say, across those 30 or so programs in the faculty, there's hundreds and hundreds of modules. So they didn't get down to nitty gritty uh, module level detail. They did want to get kind of just a broad snapshot of students' program level um, uh, experiences. Um, uh, and even at our, our module level surveys, th them as well are actually broad in nature. There's only a short number of questions in them and uh, some open-ended questions mostly uh, to allow students that room to, 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 to respond with whatever they need to. We don't try and, and make it too specific just so that it can be applied across multiple modules. But um, we don't currently aggregate everything together uh, across every single survey uh, that's been conducted for um, certain uh, internal political reasons, which I know a shocker to everybody that universities are political entities. Um, but we can essentially because all the data is in Moodle, because it's all there in 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 in, in the questionnaires, because we have um, uh, capabilities on the team for for writing reports and so on. We could easily aggregate it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could do it. We haven't yet, but yeah, we could do it. Technically speaking, yeah. Any more questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.